In this video, we're going to be tackling the lead code question combination sum. So I'm sure at this point, you know already, this is a backtracking question. We can go in the lead code description. We can look at the constraints and we see unusually small numbers in the constraints. 30 and 40 is an unusually small constraint. Also coupled with the fact that this has to do with combinations, dead giveaway, backtracking question. But here's the thing, there's all different types of combinations. It's easy to fall into the idea that, hey, a combination is a combination. Everything's just one big combination, but it doesn't work like that. Because in Leak Code and in math in general, there's combinations, which are their own distinct thing. There's permutations and there's subsets. Now, obviously this is combination sum. So we're going to be talking about combinations. But while we do that, we're also going to be explaining the major big differences between permutations and subsets and how it relates to combinations. So a combination and the exact definition is a combination, not going to go into that part. But the important difference is that a combination, the order does not matter. Order does not matter. It's kind of confusing to visualize in your head. So we'll talk about that one here in a second. Second thing, that's a key identifier of a combination. The way that you can identify a combination is that a target is involved. It's called a target in combination sum, but this could be N, this could be K, just some type of outside constraint that's constraining your combination that comes in the form of a variable like NK or target. So with that in mind, we can immediately look at this data set right here and we can tell it's a combination because we have n right here we have we have a outside constraint we have our data then we have our combinations down here another way that we can identify that this is a combination is because we don't have things like one and two coupled with two and one we don't have the numbers flipped around because the order does not matter. And if the order does not matter, this one doesn't count. And that's the key distinct differences between combinations versus permutations and subsets. With permutations and subsets, you're going to see things like one, you're going to see things like two, but in combinations, you're going to see this outside variable and you're going to see that the order does not matter. But Here's where leak code gets a little bit squirrely on us because in this specific question, duplicates are allowed, which is outside the realms of traditional combinations. But this isn't a bad thing though, because this is going to actually make our lives a lot easier. Let's jump into the question. Combination sum works like this. We're going to be given a series of numbers. And with this series of numbers, we need to find all of the combinations that sum up to eight, our target. And we can also include duplicates. And when we do this, we get the combinations two, 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 and two, two, three, and three, three, and five. Those numbers, those combinations all equal eight. We're going to solve it with backtracking though. Backtracking can be very confusing to people who are not familiar with backtracking, but it's only 10 lines of code. So let's just kind of walk through things step by step. So first things first, we have a base case. This is our base case. Why do we need a base case? Well, we're going to be counting down from our target. We're going to have a target number and our target number is eight. And each time that we find a combination, we're going to be subtracting that number. So by the time that we get to zero, that means that we found a target. So what we're going to do is we're going to form the combination. That's pretty easy to understand. But also we could have situations where we minus too much. Let's say that we have two and then we try to minus five. We're going to have negative three and we don't want those. That's an invalid path. That's another base case that's going to stop our algorithm from running. But here's where things get exciting. This is where the actual forming of each individual combination is going to happen. And this is how it works. It's a for loop. And we don't always need for loops in every single backtracking question, but we need a for loop in this case because 
we have a collection that we have to form combinations on. And this for loop is going to go through every single part of the collection. Then what we're going to do, we're going to add it. And this add is going to add the number to an array. And we need to do this because we're going to have an array within an array by the time that we get done. So we're going to be adding individual arrays to a broader array, just like we did with, let's say, two, two, and two. But here's where things can really throw people off. This is the actual backtracking. And backtracking is best represented as a tree, which I have built for you guys right here. So in order to understand recursion and backtracking trees, you have to understand what the nodes and the edges actually mean. The nodes represent individual snapshots of that particular place that we are at in the recursive process. While the edges, those represent a state transition. A state transition is pretty much in the code where the actual recursion happens. Whenever we trigger this actual part of code right here, the actual recursion, this represents going down the tree. And with that in mind, let's go ahead, let's start at the top. So when we start the algorithm, we're at the very top of the tree and we are at the very top of our code. We begin with our base cases. You guys know how the base cases work. Let's go ahead, let's get into the good stuff. Let's get into the for loop. Now keep in mind, this for loop is iterating over every single possible number for the combinations that we can have. This is the number that leak code gave to us. And this for loop is going to start at two. Next thing that's gonna happen is that because we didn't trigger any base cases, we're clear for takeoff. We can go ahead and try to make a combination with that number. So we're going to add two to our array. Then we backtrack. This is the recursion. This is the state transition. We're going to move down the tree. But take a look here. Notice that we are subtracting the candidate from the target. We're subtracting two from eight because as we go down the tree, we're going to have to be subtracting from the eight so that we eventually hit zero. So when we do that state transition, we're going to subtract the candidate from the target that's going to give us six. We're currently at another place in the tree. We've state transitioned and we're at a current place within the recursive process. This is our snapshot. And what's going to happen is that we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to go through our base cases. Our base cases are not going to be triggered. And we're going to run through this for loop. We're going to start back at two. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, if we're doing this for loop over and over again, why is it not going to three? That's actually a really good question. In some cases and in some leak code problems, what you would do is you would add a one to your eye, to your index, and that would cause you to go to the next number, but we don't want to do that because we can have duplicates. Very important to understand. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're going to add to, then we're going to subtract two, and then we're going to do our state transition. So we're currently at four. We're going to do our state transition again. And this is, same thing is going to happen. We're not at zero, so we need to keep going down the tree. We're going to add two again. We're going to subtract from our state transition. We're going to move back down the tree. And finally, we're going to get to our fourth and final two, which is going to equal eight, which is the target number that we want. We're going to actually trigger our base case this time. We're going to go back up the tree. And each time that we go back up the tree, notice that we didn't actually execute this code. When we go back up the tree, this is when this final remove is going to execute. And every single time that we go back up the tree, What's going to happen is that we're going to remove a number. We're going to keep removing a number, and then we're finally going to get back up to here where we're going to be left with just one, two, and we can keep doing our combination. But we already added our first combination with the four, two, so what's going to happen is that we're going to be building this right here. Now, here's another thing. Why didn't we go back up to the root? Well, this recursion is going to go back up the tree and it's going to empty back out where it started, right back in the for loop. And once we empty right back out where we started, the recursion is going to remember where we were at. And where we were at is we were just about to move to the three. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to keep forming this combination. This same process is going to start. 
and we're going to get two, three, and three. It's going to go back up. It's going to start backtracking back up to the two. But here's where things are going to get interesting. Once we start trying for fives, what's going to happen is that it's going to eventually lead to a negative number because the number is so big. And we're not going to get any combinations with fives. Once the negative base case is triggered, what's going to happen is that we're going to begin moving right back up the tree. So we go back up the tree and the recursion is going to remember where we are at. We are currently at the two in our iteration. But here's the thing, we've exhausted everything. And being that it remembers that we're at the two, since everything's exhausted, what's going to happen is that the iteration is going to move on to the three. We can finally move on to numbers that start with three. And I'll just go ahead and give you guys the cliff notes. When we try to iterate down to the two, the tree is going to keep going down, but it's going to go over into negative numbers. Same for the three. But once we get to the three and the five, that's actually going to trigger a correct combination. So we get three and five. That is equal to eight. It's going to go back up. It's going to remember where we are. The iteration is going to start at the five. We're going to try to start building combinations that start with five but there's no other combinations that meet that criteria. So the algorithm is done. So let's go ahead, let's hop over into IntelliJ and let's code this. So I am inside of IntelliJ and first thing that I'm gonna do is create a brand new Java class. I'm gonna call this solution. This solution class is going to house two methods. The first method is going to be the actual combination. So this is what leak code wants to return. And then the actual method name is also combination sum as well too. I'm gonna go ahead and import my list. I'm gonna call this combination sum. It's going to take in an integer array called candidates. It's also going to take in an integer called target. And the first thing that we're gonna have to do is create our state. So leak code's not going to provide this for us. And we're going to have to create this ourselves. We're going to have to return this list of lists. So we're going to have to create that data structure to house all of our data. The next thing, and this is just a neat little optimization that you could do in case they ask you to, to optimize this algorithm, which they possibly could, is you could just go into here and you could do arrays.sort. That's a quick little optimization that you could do. Now, this, this has a terrible time complexity, so you're pretty much polishing up a turd here, but it's still an optimization. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start working on our actual backtracking. This is our backtracking method. This is what's going to be in charge of doing most of the work for us. We're going to pass in our candidates. We're going to pass in our target. We're going to pass in our current index. We're going to pass in a new array list because we're going to have to put all of our combinations inside of an array list. And we're also going to have to pass in the data structure that we made. So we haven't actually created this. So let's get working on creating this, but let's go ahead and return get that out of the way and let's go ahead and start creating the actual backtracking method. So the params look pretty good on this. We have our candidates, we have our target, our index. Uh, you could call this index, but I'm going to call this start. I think it's better as start just personally. And also this is not very indicative of what it's doing. This is our current combination as opposed to our result, which stores everything. So I'm going to go ahead and call that current. So let's go ahead and create our base cases. You guys know the deal. Our, once we actually get to zero, that's when we're going to stop recursing down. That's when we're going to quit with our state transition. And that's when we're going to add our current. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to return. And we're going to return nothing because we're going to do all of the actual manipulations within this and then return it to the combination sum. And in doing so, what we're going to do is we're going to return, but this method right here is going to have access to all of that. So we don't have to actually return anything here. Next thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna check if the target is less than zero. Remember that the target is negative. We don't, uh, we don't want to keep going and we don't want to add it to our combination. So we're gonna say if target is less than zero. So if it's negative, essentially. Then here's what we're gonna do. We're going to get to the good part. This is where we're going to start iterating through all of our candidates checking for combinations. And this loop looks pretty good. Seems that IntelliJ did a pretty good job here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a bit of optimization. Now, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. This is very similar to the array.sort. Don't have to do it, but it is kind of nice. And if the interviewer asks you to optimize, it's good to know. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a piece of logic to make sure that the candidate 
is not bigger than the target. So if the candidate is bigger than the target, what's going to happen is we're going to break out. We no longer want to continue exploring for combination if the candidate is bigger than the target. Just go ahead, break out of that for loop. But once again, don't have to have it. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our current.add. So we're going to add the current number to the combination that we're trying to make. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue searching for combinations, but the AI messed up big time. It did a big no-no because right here we have plus one. And remember what I told you, if you add plus one, it's not going to check for duplicates. We want to check for duplicates. So we don't want that I there. And finally, what's going to happen is we're going to do our pruning. We're going to remove elements as we go back up the tree. And that's pretty much it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, grab all this code right here. I'm going to just grab both of these methods. I'm going to go ahead, copy this. I'm going to bring over the leak code. Oh, I got to get out of full screen mode here. So I got to get out of full screen. I'm going to go ahead, bring this over. I'm going to get rid of this method here. I'm going to go ahead, toss that in. Let's run our test. Test accepted, smash that submit button. Let's see how we stack up. Time complexity is gonna be ass. Although we do look pretty good in terms of comparison to other solutions. Then let's go ahead, check our memory. Memory is gonna be pretty good. Our memory is linear. Congratulations, you passed the interview. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.